Well, Revzilla audience, uh, we have been testing a few of these YouTube lives. Uh, the real big shebang is going to be happening next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That should be March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Pat McHugh and myself will be discussing best motorcycle helmets under $300. Um, before we get into what we're doing today, have you met Pat McHugh yet? Pat McHugh has been a product expert for Revzilla for like seven years at this point, uh, and he has most recently started hosting his own videos where he did a bit of a role reversal, and I was his, uh, I was his model. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been promoted to being the speaker uh, in each video, and Spurgeon, we put a little piece of duct tape over his mouth just to make sure that he stays quiet off to the modeling side. The hardest part yeah. about being on screen with Pat is not talking, but we're gonna both be talking today. So um, we wanted to do our final test. So this is gonna be a, a live test. We have all of your comments coming through, so please feel free to drop comments in the section. We're looking at the computer screens right now. Uh, the most recent one was by Burke B. Uh, Burke B was talking about the fact that uh, they are looking for an alternative for the K1. So that will be something that we hit on in next week's live video mm -hmm. about best helmets under $300. In this video, however, we wanted to tease the fact that for those of you that don't know, the X-T4 from Arai, their very long in the tooth adventure helmet has been around for 12 years now? Yeah, about 12 years now. Is going away. And as of next week, the X-T5 is going to be hitting shelves. Now, to play nice with embargo, we're not going to show you the actual helmet that we have sitting here, but you'll be able to see pictures of it on screen. Yeah, not that we don't want to, that we're not allowed to show it on here until next week, which our full review comes out, I believe, on Monday, somewhere in that, that time frame. But we can't show it until then, but we wanted to talk about it, and Spurgeon's been using the XD4 for going on, I think we were talking about seven this before, years, seven years. years. Yeah. yeah, so we wanted to talk about some of the features that he liked in that and what we're going to see in the new version, because we can talk about all the specs of it uh, in the XD5. Now, what we can't talk about is riding impressions. So. Um, we can tell you what we know from a factual difference standpoint, the information that's already out there on the product page, but what we can't tell you is the opinions of riding in this one and then going out and riding in this one. That will all be in the video next week, so make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube if you're not already subscribed um, to catch that video when it comes out. One of the questions coming in um, right from the get-go on this is, uh, Let's see, there was, where, I just missed it. Did one of the comments go away? What's going, oh, here it is. It's Dylan Van Loon uh, says, is there a difference between the XD4 or the X4 and the XD4? Do we know, is that a European version of this? Uh, yeah, there might be some confusion there just because I know in Europe it was called the Tour line and it was uh -huh. like the Tour 4 and the uh, even the XD5, which is live in Europe, is the Tour 5. So there are different naming conventions, but in the US it was the XD4 and then they had the VX uh, Pro 4, which was the dirt helmet. Uh, and then the XD5 is the US version of the Tour 5. I think that's an important delineation in the fact that like, when you're looking at any of these helmet manufacturers, we are talking about the United States version. Uh, if you're looking at European versions of Arai, there's different safety ratings, there's mm -hmm. different ways they approach it, and there's also different naming conventions. Um, uh, R-A1K starts off by saying, Spurgeon, I'm disappointed in you. Um, I can't wait to see where this one's gonna go, uh, but says that, Disappointed you didn't take the time to explain how Snell standards were completely altered to make the Shoei X15 a both Snell and ECE rated helmet. So there's a lot of information out there on Snell and ECE. Uh, whilst we are doing product reviews, we typically don't go into the nitty gritty on explaining the differences in the safety ratings. We put out there what the safety ratings are. We are actually working on a common tread article right now that breaks down exactly what you can expect because we are now looking at the newest ratings are gonna be ECE 2206. Yeah, 2206 just replaced 2205. And even Snell at this point, 2020 is about to be replaced by 2025 come October, I think is when uh, when people are started allowing to sell Snell 2025 helmets. So that whole entire concept will change, although there's not too much changing 2020 to 2025 uh, from what we know so far. It all changes every five years for them. So the helmet that I've had for years, and I actually, this is my personal XD4. Um, I've used this on a couple different launches now. And this one I think is Snell 2015. Um, the newest one that I have is 2020. And then we're expecting to see, uh, I, I think our, our producer just put a, a picture of me wearing this helmet where it's all fogged up because the pin lock for this system was mm -hmm. atrocious. But the new XD5 should be getting 
uh, Snell 2025. So those are the two newest. It's, it's ECE 2206, Snell 2025. And in America, um, we're not going to see ECE and Snell for the American version, we're, we're most likely just going to see Snell. Yeah, yeah, expected. it's going to be DOT and Snell, and I think that's they're, that's really just a ride dealing with what they can. They can't get the stickers to add them into helmets until, like I said, October of this year. That's when we're probably going to see a rolling change in them, just have the stickers in there. Not too much change with that standard. No. So. And to the point of Solan Rias, some of you guys and girls are picking great names to have us try and pronounce. Uh, says that despite the difference in safety ratings, the helmets will look the same, and that's correct. So why we, we can't show you exactly what the new XD5 is gonna look like here on the table, out of respect for the embargo, we can show you pictures. Um, let's talk about looks to start off with. So from a subjective standpoint, Pat, you got to see this helmet at ICMA in Europe. You got to see this in person, not just photos. How do you feel the helmet looks compared to the new one. Yeah, I saw it I saw it in November of last year when they had the Tour 5, the European version, on display at ICMA um, out in Milan. And honestly, I'm a fan of the xd 4 style, just being more of a dirt rider and more of an aggressive ADV rider, even at that. I think they made the new style look a little bit more touring to the look. I think we yep. both were talking about that. It's a little bit more touring style, whereas the old version looked like a dirt helmet with a shield added onto it. So I kind of prefer the old version, but there's a couple features in the new one that I do really like. So I'm interested to see your comments in there below. I'm with Pat. So the old version is built on the Arai VX Pro 4 shell. So this is built off of their, their dirt bike chassis um, from the shell standpoint. The, the new one has a completely different shell. And for me, the biggest thing that I uh, like about the old one, in, in fairness, so I have been riding the XD5, mine is in Mojave Sage. That's the name of the color. It reminds me of TRD Pro Toyota Calvary Blue, um, but Arai is calling it Mojave Sage. I think it's a great freaking color. We can even put up the color in a picture on the screen right now. Um, my issue is that they didn't color match the peak. And I know that's purely my opinion, but I, I look at you know my old one and I love the fact that the peak is color matched with you know, the, the loud and crazy graphics, I wish the Mojave Sage would have had a color match to Peak and Plastic, but you mentioned that that's not the same for all the colors. No, I, I have the all black XD5. It's what I've been uh, testing out and riding in, and I, I didn't really notice it too much until we got the different colors, and you notice that some of the bits are different colors, but I mean, in all black, I think it looks fantastic. Even the white, the Peak does match um, the top, but again, they added black plates onto the side um, as well, so it just looks a little different, I think. I think graphics, like you always go for, will, will probably match on each one. So. Stepping away from the looks for a second, we have a functionality question from Boxcar Racer says, what is the point of a peak visor on an adventure helmet? I mean, I usually, since I'm usually riding behind you, I usually uh, use it for roost uh, deflection because yeah. he's usually kicking up a ton of rocks right into my face. So I typically just dip my head down. It's good for riding into the sun, things along those lines, but um, it's reminiscent of most dirt helmets where dirt helmets always have the peak to block some roost. So it just helps out for a little bit of protection. But usually for an ADV helmet, which beginners might not know, you can just pull that off and usually just run it on the street without that because at highway speeds, that becomes a big sail on top of your helmet. So one of the things to note here, so before we move on from you, Boxcar, um, I like it because oftentimes I'll use goggles with an adventure helmet. If I'm using on-road, off-road, I, I prefer to use goggles to keep the dust out. And when you're using goggles, it does help to block some of the sun because you can't use a full you know, smoke shield or, or sunglasses. So you're using goggles, which sometimes allow a bit more sun through so the peak can kind of, you can kind of lower your head to block the sun um, depending on the time of day that you're riding. The, the new XD5, from a factual standpoint, we're only sharing the facts out there, they did shift to make it easier. One of the complaints with the XD4 is that there was no easy way to take the face shield off. You had to unscrew it from the side, take the peak off, take the face shield off, rescrew the peak back on. So one of the changes that we are gonna see with the XD5 is you can now just remove the face shield, take it off, set it aside, use it with just goggles, or like, like Pat said, you can remove the peak and screw the side plates back on with just one screw, not two, and you get a, a real kind of a regular street kind of helmet look to it, almost like a Street Fighter helmet look to it. Yeah, and they took the technology from their street helmets, which always had the VAS system, where you just click a button on the sides and the entire shield and everything can pop off. They actually added that into the XD5 instead of going with more of a traditional what we saw back in 2010, 2012 when this helmet came out, which was just the screws pop off the entire shield. So they did make it easier, which is nice. And Arai's always been known for those easy side pods on the exterior of the shell 
Uh, so I, I like that they added that feature in. So speaking of questions coming in here. Yeah, there's a lot uh, of questions. There's a great questions. Mm -hmm. um, Showy fits my head best, but Arai helmets are so nice, says Jay Maxi. The one thing that I want to throw out here is that these are both intermediate oval fit helmets. Um, Arai did address the fact that some of the complaints on the old one were they were harder to get into, so they did change the, the shape that we're going to see with this. Now, you have to wait for the, a video to come out next week before we can discuss our opinions on whether that shift in, in shape made it easier or harder to get the helmet on and off, but they did change that. And then um, the other thing to note here too from the internal shape is these are both still gonna retain their intermediate oval fit. So when we're talking about the shape of a helmet, maybe you're new to motorcycle helmets or you're just not sure how to correctly fit them, um, we have a whole helmet video about how to size and buy. But it's going to be a little bit longer front to back, a little bit narrow on the side of the head, and it should work for the majority of the American market. I would say that for the XD4 specifically, this actually reminds me a lot of a Showy fit. It doesn't fit too differently than a Showy, but not all Arise are the same. You can look at something like the Signet, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the most extreme long oval helmets in the market, and then you can go with uh, the Quantum. The Quantum, which mm -hmm. is more round oval. Mm -hmm. So Arise have different fits within their own line, whereas like Showy, if you put a Showy on and you fit in one, you're pretty much going to fit in, in the majority of them. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, fit is, I mean, that's, to me, at least when I'm shopping for a helmet, that's everything, so finding one that actually fits properly, because usually my rides are going north of an hour, or two hours each time, so finding something that's not going to cause pressure points or anything like that is probably, to me, the first thing I look at when I'm trying to figure out which helmet's great. And I think the intermediate oval fitment in this, I know you 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 like the um, the cheek pads, the interior mat uh, materials on this one, but it's like the fit to me was really nice. So yeah. At least for a standard helmet size here in the US. I, I Arise one of those brands where I can usually throw it on. The Signet Q is the only one that really doesn't fit me mm -hmm. um, super well. We had a comment come in from Rico La says $900 USD for a bucket, heck no. Price is subjective, Rico. Yeah. Um, I, I have traditionally spent my own hard-earned money on Arai helmets, and I, I don't have a problem doing that. But also, we understand that $900, this is a two, the new XD5 is gonna be a $200-ish price increase mm -hmm. over the XD4. And I think Pat and I have looked at each other a couple times and said, listen, I get you know inflation's a real thing, but $200 price increase, I think is definitely gonna be hard for a lot of people to swallow. So I think there's probably a lot of people out there Rico, that would agree with you. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, if, if whatever helmet is in your budget and you gotta, you know, you wanna wear, wear a helmet, that's all that matters to, to really us. Find the one that fits your budget, all the features that you want, and I think that goes for it. But to me, Arai's always been at that price point, um, the upper end of the spectrum, just because of their hand uh, handcrafted quality out of Japan, so. And that's what we're gonna get into in next week's video. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that are just joining us, uh, this is a live test. Uh, this is the final of the tests that we've been doing on Wednesday mornings, because next Wednesday at 7 p.m., we are going to be doing a video called Best Motorcycle Helmets Under $300. We're going to discuss our five top favorite picks uh, for street helmets for you to consider in 2024 and beyond. And all of those helmets that we're going to discuss will be under $300 because one of the things that Pat and I both agree on is there's a lot of protection out there that you can get without having to spend a lot of money. Obviously, like Pat mentioned, Arai is premium, it's handmade. Um, it is a very comfortable helmet to put on. However, with the XD4, uh, like we said, this helmet's been around for a long time. A lot of complaints with this helmet in two main areas. One is the face shield. Um, and I think when we were actually filming the review for the X-D5, I might have even misspoken and said that the, uh, the X-D4 didn't come with a pin lock option. It does, but it's just really bad. Uh, the face shield in general is a huge weak point on this for me. In the, in the far open position, the face shield sits down in your line of sight. The pin lock doesn't really work because this is such... A, a convex face shield. The shield itself distorts. It's just not a great option of a face shield. So we are hoping um, that this new XD5 resolves some of those issues. Yeah, and uh, and I mean, it, it's important to note that the pin lock and uh, shield capability and the pin lock insert were a separate option you could add on to the XD4. Now that it's coming with it in the XD5, that's just an, a couple extra bucks added in there. I think for free, basically, you're getting that feature in there. But they did, I saw a comment come in by, uh, I think it was TRC Adventures, if it's gonna be better visibility through it. And it's like the fact that they're flattening out the shield, adding the pin lock in there, it does usually help with optics going through there. If it's not a con like a curved uh, uh, face shield, that does tend to help with optics going through. That gets back to the price increase too. Mm -hmm. So it's important to note that the XT4 did not come with a pin lock ready shield. You had to buy that separately and you had to buy the pin lock insert separately. So that's roughly 
I don't know. I'm not. I'm not up on my Pinlock it's facial 55, pricing. Fifty-five dollars for the shield is what it was sold separate for. So you get that included in the box. That's why right he's here, it. folks? He knows those numbers off the top of his head. So by the time you're done adding a face shield and the Pinlock insert, that's some of the price difference right there because the XD5, from what we're hearing, will come with a Pinlock ready face shield and a Pinlock insert in the box. One of the other complaints for the XD4, as a personal user of one that has used it off road, is that it's kind of hard to clean the vent out up front. Uh, the vent on this, while it kind of has more of that traditional vintage moto dirt bike kind of a look to it, um, I think the vent at the chin could have been a, bit, been a little bit better. And also, there's no way to clean this off, whereas I believe the new XD5 supposedly is going to have a little screw so you can pull this off and clean out the vent a little bit easier. Yeah, although it doesn't look like you spend too much time cleaning your helmets, judging by the... Uh, I the, ride my motorcycle. The bug people. guts on the on the Stop shell, it. but yeah, you can you can clean not out. Most here, most helmets will add... I'm here to defend myself against you. <laughs> most helmets will add like a debris guard behind it, like a piece of mesh that you can clean out with the, the new ride. It's, uh, there's a screw uh, point on the front so you can pop it off and clean it out, which just makes it a little bit easier, especially those riding in dustier climates or even muddier climates, which we have uh, here in uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, so I'm just checking in the comments section right now. This is part of... of uh, what we are trying to do with this live test is make sure that we're paying attention to you good people in the comments. Perth Garg, God given name I'm assuming, uh, old gargler says, I got an XD4 just a few months ago. Is there enough of a good reason to start FOMOing, fear of missing out? So a hey, gargler, here's the deal. Uh, can, we, can, can we do a producer chase? Can you do me a favor? This is live, this is what we get to do. Can you grab that white helmet over there on the couch and bring it to me? Now, part of what I'm doing here is I just want you to see producer Chase's shirt that he's wearing today. For those of you that listen to the High Side, Low Side Motorcycle Podcast, this is the same producer Chase that produces our podcast. He's also producing this live video. So just take a moment and appreciate the loudness of his shirt. And then uh, go ahead and gargler. <laughs> take that away. So um, this is actually the XD4 that I just got about a year ago. So what I would say is I love this helmet. Um, I don't necessarily have any FOMO at the moment, but there are definitely some things about the XD5 that are, that are improved. And again, you'll see that when we get into some of what we're gonna talk about next week in the actual review. What I will say is that for the review that we did of the XD5, we were able to put them side by side and talk about some of the differences. Both Pat and I rode with XD4s and XD5s and compared notes to see exactly what is the best. But I would say no need to necessarily have any FOMO, but it's gonna be exciting to see maybe what you decide to pick for the next helmet that you add to your shelf. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a great point because I know we've talked to a, quite a few riders who actually were anxious to get some of the closeout XD4s as they're on their way out the door just because they love the helmet so much. Even if they do end up going to the XD5 in a couple months or like a year or something, they wanted to have that last almost hurrah on the 12-year uh, the lifespan of that XD4. It was just getting so long in the tooth in a rise lineup that they just had to update it and get to the 2206 rating for the European market. So we yep. saw a completely new update. But I, I like the XD4. I think it's great. Um, I'm very anxious to see what you all think about our review on the XD5 when we get to it uh, next week, just because there's a lot of good improvements. There's things that, like even the interior materials we were talking about that it's like, they, they just updated it to modern Arai qualities and modern uh, materials that they're using. But it, it's not that the old one was bad, it's just it's been over a decade yep. since, since that one came out. So again, we're, we're walking a fine line here because we can't tell you our actual opinions on riding in both. We can just hint at certain things. The cheek pads have changed. So at first they look like they're the same cheek pads and I might've even alluded to that a little bit too closely in the review, but the cheek pads on this are a new cheek pad. They no longer have the speakers in the cheek pad. There's actually true speaker pockets in the X-D5 um, and one of the things that we like with this is that the cheek pads are a little bit easier to get into place. One of the pains that I have with the X-D4 is the fact that uh, the, the cheek pads are hard to get in and stay in, whereas the X-D5, they did uh, address that for the new version. So this is, this is kind of what we're looking to do next week when we talk about best motorcycle helmets under $300. What I'd like to do right now in closing for this is we're gonna to check to see, oh, we got, we got TM saying, Pat, 
bring the XD5 back to uh, merch when you're all done. Yeah, people in our office are oh, very excited to see, see this gosh. new one, and I, I hope all of you are, because we've seen the Tour 5 out in Europe for a couple months now. I mean, it launched at EICMA in Milan, so you could see it back then. But Andy the Mello says, great. XD5 or Hornet X2, question mark. That's an opinion question, Andy Mello, and we can't answer that because we're adhering to the embargo on the XD5. You gotta keep those opinion questions for the comments section on the new product video when it comes out. I think a lot of people um, are probably thinking that though. They're asking the questions, they're trying to figure out, you know, what do I go with for my next helmet? Uh, the important thing is whether you're looking at a Rai, whether you're looking at Shoei, um, their premium helmets. I think one of the biggest questions that we get a lot with a Rai is they haven't moved into the marketing mm -hmm. on rotational impact protection, right? This is a question we get a lot where Arise seem like they're not following the trend of including something like MIPS into their helmets. It's important to note that really what Arai does and the science that they've followed is they've designed what is called their R75 shaped shell. So their shell shape for all of their helmets is designed in a way where they're claiming that it meets the safety standards, it meets anti-rotational protection based on the shape of the shell itself. So there's a lot of questions we get on that. And from what Arai has told us, their helmets do help reduce rotational impact protection in a way that they feel satisfied with. Yeah, and I saw the, co the comment come up a few times in the chat, and it's something that I don't think a lot of people uh, realize. Arai isn't willing to sacrifice their design and their egg shape of the hell with the R75 shell for adding these little uh, creature uh, comforts, like yep. a drop-down sun visor. I know a lot of people always ask about that. They'll never add one inside the helmet, at least where Arai stands right now. They'll add it externally, so you can add a shield over top of it, like their drop-down on the on the exterior. But same thing, like I don't think they want to add MIPS in there. They'd rather come up with their own idea, design it that way to meet the standards, because again, they're still meeting EC2206 well, in Europe, and that that has yeah. that rotational built And it's the same it. thing we've seen with like the side pods, right? Mm -hmm. Like They're not willing to build their face shields to go into the helmet because they're not willing to sacrifice the integrity of the shell. So are their helmets a little bit louder mm. than some of the other helmets out there? Yeah, but most people that ride with a ride don't care. And frankly, I think that, uh, I think wind noise is, is a bit subjective to begin with. Um, it'll be interesting to know just riding with this one and then riding with this one, if you can hear mm -hmm. the difference in wind noise between the two. But for Pat and myself, we put earplugs in anyway. And yeah. I think that helps you hear the music better if you're using a comm system because you have speakers sitting right here, but the, the, the uh, earplugs help to block erroneous wind noise. These are all things that we talk about and we discuss over lunch, over breakfast sometimes. <laughs> all the time. How, what, what size earplugs are you sticking in your ear canal, Pat? <laughs> yeah. Well, I like I, the little pink ones that I get at CVS, the, little, uh, the ones designed for ladies because yeah. my, my earplugs I, need, I have delicate ears, I need the softer it's ones. It's a revealing day. I just steal whatever my wife has to, to not, hear me, <laughs> not hear me snoring. But yeah, I saw a comment come in there and like uh, we can't really talk about the X-T5 and how it's performing noise-wise until our review comes out. But just to address the comment, you should be wearing earplugs at all times when riding at any highway speed just for the damage that any wind noise is gonna do to your ears. So regardless of the helmet uh, that you're in, and it is very subjective because it has more to do with the aerodynamics of your bike, even your arm length and like lean angle and everything like that factors into how How long are your arms? Is. Oh, I, arms next to mine? I think yeah. I'm at 37. Old arm length McHugh over yeah. here. Uh, so Peter Ingram, uh, that hopefully answers mm -hmm. your question on some of the noise insulation um, and, and, and whether we wear earplugs. We will talk a little bit about the noise on the XD5 and whether it got better or worse in the full review next week. So make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube when that XD5 review drops. Um, but hopefully that helps to give you an indication of Pat and I both do recommend wearing earplugs while riding yeah. uh, because some of this is, uh, is just really, it's the only way to get the helmet to be completely quiet. Um, will it come in high vis? I'd imagine so. No, and Arai, they always have that high-vis option out there. So maybe not in the first launch, but I, I have a feeling it's going to come. Because yeah. was I know we had a couple people in the office that bought about four or five of those. Peter Peter Hit's the first one that comes to mind. The, that's so popular for the XD4, I'd imagine it's coming. So all you nerds out there, John Santos, <laughs> uh, you can probably expect to see a high-vis version of the XD5. I'm just kidding. We love nerds. Um, so let's just wrap this up. I want to start by saying, reminder, this was a live mm -hmm. test. We'll probably leave this video up, have some fun with it. But the real first kickoff full length live video is going to be next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is going to be Wednesday, March 20th. In closing, XD4 
from a factual standpoint versus XD5, which we're not telling you any of the opinions on, what we know is that the vents have changed. It's now gonna have the Arai logo vent in the front. Mm -hmm. The rear spoiler and rear vents have changed. So now instead of having to open and close two separate vents, you're gonna have one main vent and spoiler at the back. We know that the uh, front vent. The chin vent got updated, yep. Yep, so you can now remove this and clean it. We know that one of the biggest updates is they've gone, oh, this one's dirty too. Yeah. You're right, I don't clean my helmets. It doesn't. Um, the, we know that the face shield has changed. Mm -hmm. Huge change here. Even to the update that they got rid of the brow vents on the, yep. on the face shield as well. But if you've ever used this, I would take remove brow vents or brow, remove brow vents. Sally sells her seashells down by the seashore. I didn't practice enough before doing this. I would take remove brow vents if it means that I get a better optical. Yeah, and facial. the pin lock included in the box. Like I'll yep. take that over the brow vents, yeah. We know that the peak has changed. We know that the peak removal system has changed. We know that the face shield removal system has changed. We know that the shell shape itself is changed. I'm looking at you, I'm just confirming, right? I'm not yeah, getting yeah, anything yeah. wrong here. They actually added the peripheral belt into the new system, which, which was, just came out. They added the peripheral yeah. belt. Which the just PB. came out after the fact that after this helmet already launched, they added that in the there. The PB! So. <laughs> it's got the PB now. That's If you ever look at a RISE uh, uh, naming convention and you see the PB in there, that's what it stands for, peripheral belt. Um, the internal shape, well, it's still intermediate oval. We know that they've adjusted the opening to try and address some of the critiques from the XD4 for people having trouble getting it on and off their heads. It'll be interesting to see what you all think of the XD5, and you're going to get all of our opinions next week when this helmet goes live. So for all of you out there that have had questions, that have participated, that have played along, we thank you for being here. Any closing thoughts from you, Mr. McHugh? No, no. I'm very excited to see what other people have to say about the new uh, XD5. So I'm, I'm looking forward to comments and questions coming in when, we, when that video does go live next week. So if you're subscribed to us, you'll get a notification when that video goes live next week. Leave your comments down there. We're always in the comment section. We're still out testing it and riding around. I think you'll be taking that one out to the Pines uh, this weekend. This one uh, right here? Yeah, the nice, beautiful sage colorway. But if you have any Mojave questions, toss them sage. in there. Mojave Sage. You don't, sage, you don't abbreviate the color, man. <laughs> Um, I, I want to leave in closing with a comment from Kyle Buderalt. I'm assuming that's your real name, so I'm not going to make fun of it, okay? But my name is Spurgeon, so I have ground to stand on as far as weird names go. Um, but Kyle says, XD4 saved my life on my Tenere. Lack of speaker pockets and fogging of the face shield were the biggest issues for Kyle. So Kyle, what I can tell you is it sounds like both like of it. your issues will be resolved when you look at the new XD5. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I think that's a good one to close on because Arai really was listening to customer feedback as they tried to close out. Hopefully you've enjoyed us trying Alive. If you want to leave us some comments about how we did from a live perspective and what you'd like to see change for next time, go ahead and throw them down below. And please make sure you tune in at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're doing a little bit later in the evening to hopefully address the West Coast audience as well. And Pat and I are going to be doing a discussion yeah. on... Helmets under $300. Best helmets, Best helmets under, $300. under $300. Based solely on our opinion. Yeah. Producer Chase is talking in the background. <laughs> Street helmets. That's it. He's given us the whole, we got to stop living now thing. So we would have kept going. We could talk for hours, but producer Chase said it's time to go. We'll see you next Wednesday for best motorcycle street helmets under $300.